Hi guys and welcome back to Scale Motor. Today we're working on the Tamiya R34 uh, with a lot of 3D printed goodies. There'll be links down in the description, but uh, I hope you guys enjoy. Okay, so first things first, with a build like this, there was a lot of 3D printing. I think there was about four separate prints just for the body kit. Um, as you can see them there, we're working another one on. Um, so they were printed in the Voxelab Proxima, sorry, on the Voxelab Proxima uh, resin 3D printer. Excellent bit of kit. Uh, mono screen does great, prints faster than a, than a regular. Um, and then we worked them in the Airlego Mercury Wash and Kewa Station. 10 minutes in the IEPA and 10 minutes under the UV light. And then it came, then it came, then it came time to snip. Where'd that voice come from? Then it came time to snip. So there was a lot of snipping um, to get to a point where we could test fit the parts. Now I didn't print them excellently. I didn't orientate the parts that great. So we did have some issues when it came to fitment, but that's not a problem. We worked around that. Now I tend to snip close to the raft first and then uh, I've got the part with loads of supports on and you can either pick them off or cut them off then. And speaking of cutting, the body did need to be modified slightly um, on the front for the front bumper as you can see with our test fit here but we got that to fit. Always test fit when you've got 3D printed parts. And we stuck these in place just so we could get the fenders on the sides. As you can see, as the body kit all uh, all taped up, you can see some fitment issues which we sorted, but then it was on to the fun part. Um, there was that cool, cool pen spin, and then I looked like a mug, because I can't even open the pen. I did not put it in my mouth to open it, I promise. I gave it to somebody else. But then we just marked what we needed to cut out. So there was a bit at the top here, and then we needed to cut the arches here. Um, again, this is the booty of test fitting. We can see stuff like this. Um, it was obvious that it needed to be cut, but still, test fit, test fit, test fit, and test fit again. <laughs> the back needed to be cut for the diffuser too. And uh, after refining those lines, uh, making sure I know where I'm cutting, um, I decided to go ahead and add some cross hatching anyway, just in case I cut the wrong part off. And I was just left with two crescent moon shape pieces of plastic that was suck anyway uh first of all i scraped away i don't know why i done it this way but then we came in with uh with a photo etch saw and then we can come in with our file just to clean up our edges and then we test fit again and we can see our tire through our vent at the top excellent and the wheel fits nicely so just take your time when you're cutting bits like that more snipping now this is the engine bay by 193d i think it's a 19 creative 3d uh links will be in the description obviously excellent parts um but we had to modify this this part was for a r32 but i thought i'll give it a go um so we had to as you can see i'm cutting big chunks of the uh the chassis out but we got our engine bay to fit and then obviously more test fit in we're just gonna slide our body over the top just to make sure it still goes on some issues with the back but that was because of the kit connector point and then what use is a swanky engine bay if you can't see it so we went and cut the bonnet off there it is makes it easier to decal too i suppose Then <clears throat> we glued on our body kit and went to town with the filler. A lot of filler needed. It didn't have to be blended in, but I wanted to blend it in because I'm that type of person. I like to make more work for myself. So lathered it with uh, with Tamiya thinner and then used a uh, Tamiya thinner, sorry, Tamiya filler, and then used a toothpick just to kind of try and smooth it over. Then we waited for that to dry and we came in with our UMP sanders and just started removing material. Um, this was a long process of removing material, priming, checking again, removing material, repriming. Um, so yeah, it did take a while. I'm not going to show every step. Um, there you go. It's primed and now I've come back in with some uh, some sanders just to, uh, just to remove some excess filler. 
and then I primed and sanded again. As you can see here, I moved on. These these were quite a, quite hard to blend in on the edges here, but we uh, we managed to do it. We got it done um, <clears throat> without needing any more filler as well, which is great. Um, so yeah, just take your time. Sand, fill, sand, sand, fill, sand, prime, sand, sand, prime, prime, sand. Just keep going until you've got a nice smooth surface, until that primer sits lovely and you can't see the gap anymore. Speaking of primer, we moved on to the UMP Gloss Black Primer and uh, we primed our body and a lot of other parts. Um, first of all, I'm just trying to get the annoying kind of recesses and, and, and curves just to make sure we've got them with primer. And then we primed the bonnet also and pretty much everything with uh, everything body related with the uh, UMP Bla Gloss Black Primer. Now, this has been sitting on my shelf for almost two years now and I realized the lid was slightly open so it was a little thick so it had to be um, uh, strained and I put a tiny bit of UMP thinner in it as well and it uh, yeah the finish didn't come out that great unfortunately I think it was a mixture of my new spray technique since uh, receiving a gen very generous gift from Brian Windmill in the form of a Sparmax compressor so now I got constant air rather than that cheapy crappy compressor that I was using before and uh, and the paint was a bit old so I didn't get a great finish so we did come in after um, we did come in after painting and uh, spent quite a bit of time sanding off the uh, you know trying to get a nice smooth finish and it wouldn't be a YouTube video without a nice artsy shot from a different angle um, yeah, that sponge looks questionable, but it's useful for weathering. So yeah, we just went through various fine grit sanding um, pads and sponges, and we got a nice shiny finish like we got on the back there. Next, it was time to glove up and get ready for the exact uh, the the painting, um, and we were painting with Alclad Spectral Holomatic Spectral Chromey stuff. Alclad paint you wanna uh, straight out of the bottle and spray it on quite thin and build up the coats uh, bit by bit so uh, first of all I'm doing what I generally try to do with my first coat and get all the annoying little areas and, and nooks and crannies and creases and crevices and get in everywhere um, and then you slowly start to build the paint up with each coat and uh, this this paint gives this very cool kind of rainbowy flip in the light and I thought it was an excellent colour for a crazy car like this. So, um, you can slowly see that uh, that kind of flip come into life as you paint. And it is there. Now, it, it can be quite hard to get even coverage when using flip paint like this. Because, you know, you can't really notice the gap. So, just pay special attention to your coverage when, uh, when using paints like this. This one particularly, because there's so many different colours and... It's like a metallic-y kind of chromey stuff, so it, it it's hard to explain. There's like a black kind of noise, um, which is just inherent with uh, using tiny particles in your paint. So just pay attention. And uh, speaking of artsy shots, we got another one here. Yeah? And you can see my ugly mug painting away ever so speedily. Um, but yeah, pay, just pay attention because what you may think is um, the actual kind of paint, not texture, but kind of what you might think is the particles in the paint might actually be bits of primer showing through, so just take your time. Also, I may, I know it may look like it, but no, I am not topless. It was very, very warm that day and I was wearing a vest, so please don't judge me. And there we go, now on to the final coat and you can really, really start to see that kind of uh, that rainbowy spectral chromey flip and uh, I think it's an absolutely mad colour and it's an absolutely mad car so I think it suits it very, very well. And then we took it outside and look how shiny it is, we used it to blind some pilots and uh, attract some magpies but I think that looks absolutely mad in the sun, I love it, I think it looks really, really good. Um, 
and then we moved on to some uh, clear coat we decided to use Alclad aqua gloss um, it says do not shake on the bottle because if you shake it you get bubbles and it ruins the effect of the clear coat so treat it like nitroglycerine and uh, be very very careful with it and you don't have to that was overkill I'm just I'm just a paranoid mess sometimes anyway um, we slowly built up the coat um, until it kind of looked like we had a milky consistency over the paint. And now this could be very, very alarming, but don't worry, that's just the way that uh, aqua gloss works. It looked nice and milky and, and a bit weird, um, but it'll dry clear because it's a clear coat. Um, so now we're moving on to some carbon fiber. Now the bonnet is just in primer. Um, so we're using some uh, this isn't Tamiya tape as you can see is some some cheap knockoff but it, it does the job um, for wasteful applications like this so we're just using it to make a template for our carbon fiber um, so we've done a carbon fiber bonnet carbon fiber bootlid we were going to do a carbon fiber uh, roof as well but I, I this is the biggest panel of the car you needed somewhere to see that nice color flip so we left that uncarboned so cover it in uh, in tape and trim it very very close pop it on your carbon fiber sheet i don't know why i'm, I'm tapping away like a drum um trim that out make sure you get your head in the frame so people can see your hair um and then once you've got that all trimmed out you've got a nice piece of carbon so what we moved on to do then is obviously set the carbon so we put down some um micro set um, and then we wet our carbon piece kind of put it on in place and then slid the backing paper out just to kind of minimize any movement um, he says that as he goes on and just starts moving it if you're fingering your decals make sure your fingers are wet um, but then once that was done we just lathered it with some UMP strong decal solution because I know this uh, this decal film, a scale motorsport decal film, can handle that. So we jumped straight in with a strong um, and we lathered it. And then we got our heat gun. Um, just give the decal solution a couple of minutes to do its magic, put a bit of heat on it, and then come in with a just a wet all this on this uh, this brush is water just to brush it over you can see we've got some imperfections underneath which is really annoying but uh, that's fine hopefully the clear coat will help get rid of that and there's our carbon bonnet and we done very many other bits in the same fashion this is a diffuser I think it was about 14 15 pieces of carbon <laughs> <laughs> because of the shape and all those fins but then we uh we attack these with the aqua gloss too um using the point two needle for the aqua gloss and i i think it was about 20 psi um can't remember but uh but yeah we would attack in these the same way as we would there we go we attack these the same way as we would the body build it up slowly till we get a nice milky consistency Uh, this is the diffuser it's not the splitter on the front um this is done with two different pieces of carbon fiber different weave on the top and different weave on the bottom actually it was split on the middle anyway i i digress moving on lots of engine pieces these were 3d printed so um they were from uh tuna kits it was uh, a one tenth scale uh scale down to 24th scale the um the designer has done excellent stuff for the ta for the not the Tamiya his own kind of one tenth RC GR Supra, um, uh, so I leave a link to that down in the description. It's called Three D Page if you want to take a look at that. Uh, engine was excellently detailed, so I thought I had to use it, um, and a relatively good price too. So as you can see, there was lots of cleaning up um, and mounting to do, but once we got that done, we went in and we primed. Uh, primed uh, this time i think we primed with uh mr surfacer um 1500 black and we went around all the engine pieces and the chassis pieces and the actual chassis um with this mr surfacer black and then after that we came in with some gloss black i think i'm actually using zero paints gloss black here because i've run up the gx2 but we gloss blacked all the parts we wanted to be a shiny shiny uh and that includes this excellent engine bay 
which for some reason is out of shot for this whole painting shot. Speaking of shiny shiny, we moved on to using the Molotow Liquid Chrome through the airbrush. Uh, point 0.2 needle, I don't know if it needs to be a point 0.2 needle, but with this I found if you're airbrushing it, it needs to be uh, lathered on there. Uh, you need a nice wet coat to get a nice shiny shiny finish. Uh, then we moved on to Hot Metal Blue. Um, we used this on a couple of pieces just to give a kind of anodized blue look. Um, and then we done the same with the Hot Metal Violet to give a nice kind of shiny, shiny purple. Uh, these are the cam gears uh, from the front of the engine, excellently modelled. And then we moved on to Exhaust Manifold Paint, again from Alclad. And this was on the kind of hot pipes and the turbo and the um, the exhaust manifold, as the name suggests, just to get a nice kind of faded old used, not old, but a nice used finish on the pipes to look like they've been heated. And we also hit the hot side of the turbo with this too. The turbo was, uh, was modelled absolutely beautifully too. Now, I'm an absolute melon and I totally lost the footage of me painting all this wonderful, wonderful undercarriage up. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little hold here and I'm just going to go through it. So, as you can see, we have used um, our primer, our uh, Mr. Surfacer 1500 primer on uh, for the black parts. Then we masked up and painted some silver bits. Um, as you can see, those silver and that was just done in, I believe, um, gloss aluminium. Tamiya gloss aluminium and then we masked up again and we painted that metallic blue which is Tamiya X13 metallic blue um, and then we give a nice dry brush of AK Interactive true metal steel uh, it's that waxy kind of stuff just to hit the edges and to make it look a little bit used um, and then we used a nice Tamiya panel line wash to bring out the uh, recessed detail uh, so we got the recesses, the recessed detail with the panel line wash and the raised detail with the dry brush. Now, let us move on. So we're just using our um, Loctite Creative Pen just to add a couple of dabs of glue where we need it and we, uh, we are putting the parts on. You can see these parts kind of fit really nicely with the 3D printed parts. Speaking of 3D printed, it's a 3D printed engine and building this up was excellent fun. We used some of this kind of vinyl tape stuff to recreate the belt because in 124th it, it didn't print very well, unfortunately. But, uh, but yeah, we cracked on. Now we're adding the intake. This is one of the things we painted uh, that colour. Purple, uh, that it is, as the words. Um, and then we had to modify these files just to get them to fit around the uh, engine bay. And we did... Um, we did have to go into Nomad Sculpt on the iPad and create our own pipe work. Um, great thing about Nomad Sculpt is you can just put all these random three 3D files together and make them work, and then print them out as you wish. Um, this is the intake pipe I'm adding now. Um, but yeah, you can see it all fits nicely. We did modify quite a few files, including the exhaust manifold and uh, and these, which came with the engine bay. So we had some suspension struts. So we're just using some solder wrapped around a uh, a stick to get some nice springs for the front. And then it came to gluing our wheels on. These wheels came with the body kit and they are fabulous. And they were painted in old bronze, which is another one of those kind of waxy uh, AK interactive uh, true metal paints. Um, paint is kind of uh, rubbed off in the middle of the wheel, just where I've been holding it. But we did add that back later on but yeah here we are that's uh, that's the body and chassis done and the engine look at that look at that 2jz don't kill me please i know it's meant to be an rb26 but this file was too good to pass up um yeah absolutely landed with how it's looking at this stage which is great Okay, next up was the interior. Now, originally, I decided I'm doing a grey interior. So, I mixed Mr. Surfacer 1500 white and Mr. Surfacer 1500 black to get a nice primer colour. Um, and then we painted up all the interior parts with that. And then we used some um, Zero Paints grey textured paint as well to get a nice grey texture. This all went down very, very nicely. Then I looked online for some reference photos and found 99.9% .9 of these cars did not have a grey interior. So, 
And to be honest, it didn't quite like the look of it. So we went for black. So what we done now is we're going to keep some of the grey. So we're masking off areas where we want to keep grey. So we've done a bit in the seat, a bit on the dashboard, as you can see, and some bits on the door cards. Um, we use those, de we use those uh, kind of indents in the seat to help cut our paint. As you can see, I'd already started detail painting. I thought it didn't look great, so we decided to paint everything with black. I think I'm using uh, Tamiya, se yeah, semi-gloss black I'll be using, X18. So we kind of went mad. We just, let's say we went mad. We painted everything in this uh, semi-gloss black. Just because I think it actually looks better. And normally with interiors, I get complacent and I'm like, ah, just, just get it done, just get it done. Um, but I'm I'm quite happy with this one and I quite enjoyed it. Um, so yeah, as you can see, some some grey parts we decided to keep. Um, I thought that the difference was quite stark at this point. Uh, you can see they are quite light, um, and it, that's not a problem. I didn't think it looked terrible. Um, but when it came to like detail painting, as you can see here, we just used some uh, Vallejo silver to paint the outsides of our. A speakers, the speaker surrounds, uh, and there were a couple of other bits like on the door cards. We'd done our handle, and there were some bits on the dashboard, and also at the center of the steering steering wheel. Great thing with the steering wheel, if the center needs to be painted, just load your brush up with paint, hold it steady, and spin that toothpick you mounted it on, and uh, job done. But yeah, because that grey was a bit stark, we decided to come back in with the Tamiya panel line wash, and I kind of painted with it just to bring that down it does look really dark there but when it dries it it dries a lot uh it dries lighter um a couple of decals to add to the interior nothing major we have this uh which is the gauge cluster and we had one or two uh like one on the steering wheel and i don't think there was actually any more in the interior oh yeah i tell a lie some some other gauges which are on that center piece which is uh, which we're going to stick on last and then we just went and used our uh, loctite creative pen that seat is not painted because this is a different seat that is the driver's seat and it needs to be more comfortable that's the 3d print designed and 3d printed by myself uh, maybe available on my cult soon i just need to refine it slightly but then we built up the interior with our loctite creative pen to add the glue and we slowly built it up and like i said i was really happy with how this interior turned out for a change uh, yeah, yeah, quite happy with that. And then came the dreaded window mask in. I didn't realise that they had these window masks in the kit and I was already halfway through downloading photos ready to kind of make and cut my own. Um, and then I decided to actually check the kit and we had pre-cut window masks. Um, I cut them further just to make them... I, I don't know why I did. I'm an idiot. But anyway, we added our pre-cut window masks uh one by one there's lines on the actual glass to to guide you so uh yeah it's, it's it's quite easy to do um and it's easily peelable now something which is not always easy to do and thoroughly annoying is this and it's masking window um masking the window rubbers uh so i tend to come in with a thin masking tape first and then fill in the gaps with a thicker masking tape um, you can paint brush paint it but I've only seen a handful of um, of people who have done that and it turned out well and I don't have a steady enough hand so <laughs> we decided to mask it off uh, we used some cling film so we were wasting, wasting masking tape um, <clears throat> mask it off and then painted with Tamiya semi gloss black as was our the interior of our windows and then came the fun part which was taking the masking tape off and checking where we've bled through or um, where we've missed the masking as you can see one or two places we did miss but that was easy to polish out and uh, but we didn't really get any bleed through and the same on the actual windows because they've been handled and they've got sticky residue on anyway <laughs> the next day we come in with some detail painting again using uh, Vallejo, this is Vallejo Model Air Chrome, and we're using it to paint the uh, the back light surrounds. And the reason these were done in metal because they are actually heat shields. Because I decided to go mad with the exhausts and poke them out through the back. Speaking of exhausts, that's what we're doing now. Just detail detail in the area with some UMP pigments and some Tamiya weathering 
stuff and things. So we added a bit of a uh, bit of blue burn to the pipe and a bit of uh, sootiness on the uh, on the heat shield. And then it came time to glue our exhaust pipes in. We had one each side, which might be a bit silly, but never mind. And then it came time to test fit the body. This was really, really scary because we got the glass in and everything and we're pretty much right at the end. But it went on quite well. And then we came to glue the spoiler on. And yeah, that's it. Um, we're going to have a look at some photos now very, very quickly. But uh, look at that. I'm happy with that. So there we go. Um, there's a shot of uh, without the shell on. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed this one. It was crazy from the outset. Um, uh, constant um, ideas. Uh, as you can see, the aqua gloss polished up really, really nicely. Um, I didn't use 2K because I knew I was low. Um, yeah, here's a nice uh, shot. It's on a trailer because it's a show queen. Um, yeah, absolutely love this build. Um, if you liked it too, don't forget to leave a like and a comment. And also subscribe to hit the bell notifications to catch any next videos but there you can see that excellent shine in the sun and that, that color flip i think it looks amazing uh, what do you think anyway in the meantime thanks for watching have a great day and stay safe